Hello, and welcome back to Between the Sundays, the latest Let's edition. Uh, today, I'm joined by Pastor Aaron White, who is our associate pastor, and by my son, Cooper. Yep. Let's uh, go. Cooper's on our team as our music director, and uh, mm-hmm. just a great all-around dude. And it was a oh, big wow. week for you. Yes, it was. Uh, this past week, you graduated from high school. I did. I graduated did from do high that. School. So that's a big, big accomplishment. Proud of you. Proud Thank for you. Much. Welcome to adulthood. Welcome to adulthood. <laughs> um, so you've got... You got the summer, but then this mm-hmm. fall, what are, what are your plans this fall? Uh, I will be attending Lee University to uh, play baseball. That's so. great. You're going to go to class too, though, right? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. No, you're going to go to class. So. Uh, <laughs> going to Lee this fall. That's fantastic. Straight A's. So we are proud of you. Thank you. Um, so today, I want us to talk about a couple of things. Obviously, uh, you know, I say this a lot, like when you have kids in school <laughs> mm-hmm. or even kind of around the schools, you know, you your year kind of has this like starting and stopping date. Mm-hmm. If you don't have kids at home, like in school or whatever, like it's just May the 30th or May the 31st <laughs> or June, the fr- like it doesn't so matter because you just keep going to work. So, yeah. uh, but for our ministry calendar, there is kind of a turning of the page because mm-hmm. we finish up a school year. We start the summer, and with summer, there's a lot of events and things. Mm -hmm. But this past weekend, we had Memorial Day, which Mm -hmm. definitely feels like it's kicking off summer. I know on the calendar, it doesn't officially happen for a few more weeks. Yeah. But we had what we call a standalone sermon. It comes in between sermon series. I love those. Um, Yeah, so we they're usually one-offs. There's not usually two or three of those in a row, but sometimes there are. This week was just a one-off between the series we did in May. um, We were talking about Way of the Wise, Mm -hmm. and then the series we're going to do in June, which maybe we'll talk about in a few minutes, really... Um, kind of summer seven, but um, and we and I just I looked at the passage in Matthew twenty six where we talk about communion. Mm-hmm. We didn't take communion. Somebody said this morning, like you talk, you did communion without doing communion. <laughs> um, set it up really great. Set it up really. We could have <laughs> taken communion. It was a sweet spot for that. But we did talk about the passage where Jesus he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, mm-hmm. and then he gave it. Yeah. And we just we looked at this idea that. In him doing that, he said, this is my body. He was foreshadowing the brokenness of his body on the cross, and even before that, leading up to the cross, Mm -hmm. to say, like, if you've ever experienced brokenness in your life, or you're walking through a season like that now, this was Jesus saying, hey, I can identify with what you're feeling. I've been through what you're walking through, Mm -hmm. and I love that aspect of Jesus, um, not just as this broken Savior, obviously we believe in the resurrection, but that he could identify with pain and hurt and betrayal and mm-hmm. all of those kinds of things. So I'll start with Aaron and then I'll, I'll come to you, Coop. But like, what were kind of the things that resonated with you in the sermon, in the service? Mm-hmm. Um, how did it speak to you personally or how do you feel like it connected to our congregation? Yeah, I, I mean, even from the response this past Sunday, which was incredible, um, so many people stood in response to just they've walked through brokenness, they are walking through brokenness. Um, but I feel like everybody's walked through some sort of brokenness. Yeah. If you've been on this earth long enough, yeah somebody's done wrong to you, somebody's hurt you, uh, you made mistakes, you've fallen short. And so everybody has experienced some kind of brokenness. And what I loved about your message, one of the points that I wrote down is you're not alone yeah. in your brokenness. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just kind of talked about it, but Jesus experienced brokenness himself. And so to know, you know, not <laughs> only am I not alone because Jesus walked through it, but you could see from this Sunday, you're not alone because there's people in the room. I mean, right. multiple, multiple people. And that's not even including the people that have walked through brokenness before and they've, you know, kind of worked through that, that didn't stand. Yeah. But you're not alone, you know, with the people around you yeah, yeah, that yeah. have walked through brokenness. So coming out of that message, I love just the fact of knowing that whether you've been broken before or you're walking through brokenness now, you're not alone. Yeah. And there's some people around you that you can be in community with that can yeah. help build you up, that can walk alongside you. Yeah. You talk about like, not everybody needs to know your mess, yeah, but yeah. somebody does. Somebody like, does, yeah. Somebody in your life, whether that's your spouse, uh, whether that's a close friend, needs to know that so they can walk alongside of you. Uh, so that was that was really big to me. And then yeah. just the response. I mean, we did something different. You, you alluded yeah. to it a couple times, but normally... Uh, you know, we'll have people pray, have personal response times for prayer. But this Sunday, I felt really specifically impressed to have people stand. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, if they were walking through brokenness right now, if they felt like they had been broken but not healed from that, and uh, you know, we had about sixty people just stand yeah. in the room, and then we had other people that were around them just you know, kind of stand and lay hands on them and pray for them, pray yeah. with them. Uh, it was a powerful moment yeah. in the room just to feel like because I said I had everybody bow their heads first. 
because I know that's a courageous thing to stand mm-hmm. up, but I didn't I didn't want to, to be awkward, but I, I knew that was the response for everybody. And I, I just said, like, I promise you, if you stand, you won't be by yourself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, as soon as I gave the invitation, there were probably a dozen people that yeah. stood up in the yeah. first second, two yeah. seconds. Um, and then you started to see people standing, standing, standing. So it, it was a powerful moment in the room. But then also to watch our church family pray for one another. Yeah. That was powerful. We offer elder prayer every mm-hmm. Sunday for people to come forward and receive prayer. But this was a moment where people prayed for people in the seats. Yeah. And uh, that was a really powerful. Somebody snapped a picture from the side and sent it to me after church and oh, just see, see that. You know, just dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of people, really, when you kind of look at it, like praying for one another and something. Yeah. That, that was a powerful thing. Coop, what about for you? I think I would allude to the same thing you guys said. I think we were the band itself was like walking onto the stage as everybody was standing. And it was just something like a super powerful moment of like when you were looking at like people were praying for each other. And it's not easy to talk about like your mess yourself or mm-hmm. being broken and if you have been broken or when you were broken. And that's a tough subject for anybody. But I think especially in the church, that's never an easy subject. And I'll praise you that the message was really good. And I think it connected to a lot of people. But the like almost the beauty of seeing people stand together and standing together, praying for each other and talking about something that's not a fun subject. And yeah. then like being able to connect it, but not only to people, to Jesus. You talked about how Jesus was broken and it made it made Jesus seem like super relatable. And I think yeah. that's super cool. Yeah, that's good. I had a lady that, you know, she's she's been in church a long time, but she said, she was like, I've read that that passage of scripture in Matthew 26 hundreds of times. Yeah. For every time we take communion, mm-hmm. she was like, I've never thought about how he was telling me he could relate. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And uh, good. and I do think that there's something I the, the the part for me is I was, you know, obviously the, when you write sermons, it's it's kind of a wrestling match. At least I view it as that. I like wrestling with the text and wrestling mm-hmm. with what the Lord has for us. And then coming to a place where you feel like, okay, Lord, this is this is my offering to you, and this is my offering to our people of, of pointing them to your word. But the, the part there is is like, you know, like you can only find wholeness by coming to broken Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, like the, a Jesus that was broken too. Like mm-hmm. just, just I mean, there's so much power in that. I relate to that, yeah. you know, in the yeah. seasons where I've walked through. Like there, there's such a, a, I don't know, a power in knowing like he can relate. The betrayal, he can relate. Yeah. And we went to that that original text there. Um, in Matthew 27, when he's hanging on the cross, and he says, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. Like, why would they leave that in there? Like, there's this emotion, this rich text there that's like, you hear the anguish in his voice. Yeah. And while that may not be our words, we all have broken words. Like, mm-hmm. why, why does this happen to me? Why do I have to walk through this? Why did they do this to me? Why did they say that? Yeah. Why would they betray me? Like, those are our broken words. And, man, there's just power in knowing. Like you said, you know, other people in the room have experienced it too. You saw so many people standing, and then that Christ can relate. So just yeah. a really powerful. It was a powerful yeah. day, and it and it kind of capped off just an incredible week. It did. Yeah, it I really mean, did. It, it was, was a, big week. A, a busy week for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it a was. busy yeah, week yeah, for yeah, y'all. It was, sure, uh, but an incredible week for our church. Yeah, it, it really was. was. Yeah, I mean, we talked about obviously Cooper graduated. So for our family, yeah. we had a graduation <laughs> party and graduation. We had Sports some games. of his friends. We had games and practices and stuff, which is normal, but. Like the powerful thing for us, we started the week on Monday yeah. of of last week, leading up to this past Sunday. We're talking about uh, we closed on the purchase of the building that we're sitting in right now. Yeah. I feel like we um, need like a <laughs> like, like a sound bite of some uh, yeah, audience yeah. clapping <laughs> right there. Woo! Come on, you know. Um, <laughs> this has been coming for um, really four years yeah. in total. For like we knew it was coming, we had a date, um, but since we moved into the building in 2016, so seven years, give or take. Mm. Um, of just like trusting God. You know, the short story is that in 2019, the the part of our building where our worship center and our lobby is, that used to be a Sears. I, mm-hmm. I joke all the time. I'm not even sure if I'm pointing in the right direction anymore. <laughs> like, you could buy a fridge right over there. Um, but that used to be a Sears. Yeah. And w- they were going out of business and they put up this banner. From the time we went to lunch one day till we came back, the banner went up. And so when we came back from lunch. We we're like, hey, let's go look at it. Mm-hmm. So we walked downstairs with like a tape measure. Like, let's see if we can put stuff here. But the landlord called us. We were renting at that time. The landlord called us and said, hey, do you want to rent the space? And I mm-hmm. said, man, I, I would love to, but we don't want to because we'll eventually have to do something permanent. Mm-hmm. And I said, but I would be interested in buying your building. And he was like, we don't sell buildings. <laughs> and I was, he like, was well, like, not the response to yeah. warning. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, we, we're not going to rent it. It yeah. doesn't make sense for us. Mm-hmm. So he said, he said, well, give me a couple of days. And he called us back three days later. He said, well, we'll let you buy the building at the end of your current lease term, mm-hmm. which is now 2023. Yeah. But only if we set a fixed price now, 
in 2019. Praise the Lord, we did. Well, for those that know anything <laughs> about the market, you Praise know, it Lord. was a lot lower then than it is now. So uh, we were able to set a fixed price, which was a huge blessing for us. And we closed on the building. We own it. Uh, there's a great picture that we showed on Sunday yeah. of Phenomenal just like picture. what we've been in mm-hmm. and now what we own. Yeah, yeah. You, know, building you heard property. like the gas of, of yeah. like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't even know. Yeah. Like, and I just, I, I do think there were so many people that have even been with us for a while and they, mm-hmm. they had no idea, like just the, the monumental thing that we were doing and taking over yeah. the renters that we have in the building. Cause there's, there's other renters in this facility mm-hmm. will maintain their, you know, their agreements and their lease just kind of rolls over and we become their landlords and yeah. we've got a management company, but, um, but we'll, we'll do that. And until such time that we come to their renewal dates and we mm-hmm. determine what are the needs for ministry beyond what we already have as far as facility. And, uh, and we'll make those decisions. But we are so thankful. Yeah. I said to our church Sunday, I, I attribute it to three things. One, just to God's vision for this place. Mm-hmm. Like when we came, the first time I ever drove onto this property, I was eating at Sidelines. Those that are local know like Sidelines, like kind of across <laughs> that way. Um, not a really, Mexican restaurant. It's not a Mexican <laughs> restaurant. I don't know. Something The Lord was doing something in a different way that day. But uh, we ate lunch at Sidelines, and instead of turning back onto that road, mm-hmm. which I guess would kind of be Reinhardt College, yeah, Boulevard, I came straight across, which is like Martin Luther King, because there was some like traffic and congestion. So I just drove straight across. And I've probably driven that way before, but when I got to the red light, which is right in front of what is now our, our building, mm-hmm. I saw this huge wooden sign, probably four or five feet tall, that said, For Lease. And I thought, man, we'd we'd probably looked at 60 properties, churches, old Mm -hmm. buildings, warehouses. And I saw that and and I just thought, I'm going to go see what they've got. So I pulled Mm -hmm. in and I found some like units that had four lease on the window. And I remember that day we were with two of our staff members and we laid our hands on that glass that day. And Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if this is it, just make it obvious. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, shut the door really plain so we know it. Mm -hmm. And from that point forward, the Lord has continued to ordain our steps that this was the place we were supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. So it's God's vision. Yeah. Two, I think it just is incredible leadership from our trustees and our staff teams mm-hmm. over the years. Those that are still serving, those that are mm-hmm. not in those roles and capacities, they've yeah. just given great leadership to point us in that direction and help us to prepare to be that place. And then third, just the faithfulness of our people. Yeah. They're giving so their faithfulness. Those that have just said like, hey, yeah, we believe this is the next step for our church. And it's not a finish line. It's really kind of a new starting line for us. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I'm so really thankful. Is. It's it's exciting. Yeah, uh, we're we're like one weekend to facility ownership. We've already had four issues. No, I'm, yeah. just, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. But people are beating down it, our it's door. Been, it's been it's an amazing thing. It seems very surreal. But I'm thankful to God for His yeah. provision. Yeah, um, which you know kind of led us towards the summer. Just mm-hmm. that was kind of the end of May, which was our 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 date to close on that. We go into the summer. We've got vacation Bible school. We got summer Let's camps. Go. We got golf tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coop, you've kind of born and raised at youth camp. I have been. Uh, We've been at camp almost every summer since yeah. you were born. Um, what do you love about camp? What do you hope for our students that are going to camp this summer? I mean, camp is just fun. You uh, you make memories that you'll truly remember forever. I still talk to the guys I've gone to camp with from other churches, and we talk about the stupid stuff we did. But <laughs> camp camp's a blast. Parents, he means spiritual stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. spiritual <laughs> spiritual stuff he did. Yeah. But, life changes yeah. happens. I mean, right. life. You get to have a ton of fun in the day, and then. Uh, when you're just with a bunch of other students your age walking through the same things you have going to a service um the, the message always kind of hits home that night like mm-hmm. you're there for four days and somehow every night speaks to you in a different way and so it's super powerful and being with kids your age that you know and then meeting kids you don't know but who are also your same age like it's it's just a super powerful thing but yeah. it's it's a blast so it's great yeah we mm-hmm. we love camp um it's it's a great thing we i think at this point, we've got about 40 students mm-hmm. registered for the three weeks across yeah. middle school, high school, grade school. Grade school. Yeah. We've got leaders that will go, and then they join with other churches. So for those that aren't familiar, it's it's a camp. So like middle school week, there'll be six or 700 people on the campground <laughs> from probably people. 60 or 70 churches, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, maybe yeah, more yeah. than that. But uh, really, really powerful um, event, camp. We love it. Yeah. we got Vacation Bible School coming mm-hmm. in July. So if you got a kid... Uh, you want to volunteer? I know Pastor Madeline would love to be get you a part of that team, uh, but that's coming in July. But that at the end yeah. of June, we've got our Legacy Maker Golf Tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's coming soon, and we're June excited. Thirtieth. You are actually going to play golf this afternoon. I yes, am. You are. I am. Right I now, am, you graduated. And it's like go play golf. <laughs> but, um, I, I think the the way they've been pitching it is if you are Tiger Woods, yeah. they want you to play. Yeah. If you hit it in the woods, they want you to be a sponsor, right? <laughs> um, but regardless, like I hit want, in the woods a lot of times. Yeah, so I'm still people, playing. Yeah, we want people to play. We want people to join, bring teams, bring yeah. a foursome or sign up as an individual. Mm-hmm. We'll help pair you with a team. 
but we do sponsorship is really the way that we maximize the dollars for us to raise money. Mm -hmm. This is our legacy makers golf tournament. It's now an annual event for us and we raise money for a couple things, but this year, Primarily, we're doing so to continue our, our scholarship program through our missionary, Johnny Moore, in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. We're able to sponsor and, and scholarship some students that are a part of that sidewalk ministry um, for school, for college. Then we're also sending a team to Casa Shalom in Guatemala. Yeah. You've yeah, been there. Exactly. I have been. Uh, to the orphanage there in mm-hmm. Guatemala City. Really fantastic ministry. They've got about 100 children in this orphanage. Mm-hmm. Um, their directors, Josh and Jessica Hansen, fantastic folks. But we want to send either with that team or just in advance of that team, we want to mm-hmm. send every one of those children some shoes, mm-hmm. you know, dress shoes, play shoes, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So the some of the proceeds of the tournament will go to help purchase those shoes um, and then continue to kind of grow our local sponsorships and partnerships with local school systems and some of the parachurch ministries mm-hmm. here in the community. One of the things, and I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, one of the things that we want to do is to begin offering um, like a local college scholarship Um, in our community, through our local high schools, you know, perhaps to uh, some first-generation high school graduates, some Mm -hmm. people that are actual legacy makers. They're building a new legacy, writing a new legacy for their family. You know, start with some of those families that are within our church Mm -hmm. um, and then branch outside of that into those school systems. And so um, we want to increase our ability to just help make it a difference in the community. It's Mm -hmm. not just about us gathering in this building, just meeting together and being like, hey, we love the songs we sang, and man, Mm -hmm. the message felt right, and I loved hugging people I know. Like we want to do ministry and gather together, but then get outside of the walls of this church yeah. and yeah, make yeah. a difference. Like yeah, we yeah. really do want to make a difference, and so uh, I'm excited about that. But uh, it's it's a really exciting time. Uh, kind of the last thing I want to talk about is the series we're starting this coming Sunday. Let's so, go. Brand new series. Summer it's seven. Gonna, it's summer seven. It's gonna kind of span from the beginning of June all the way almost to the end of July. Mm-hmm. We're taking that holiday weekend at the beginning of July to do something different, but. We're going to look at the seven churches of the beginning of the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. So talk to me a little bit about what you're excited about. Yeah, you got week uh, one. Yeah, I, I know. Where, where we're headed with <laughs> no this pressure. series and, and what we're going to do and what, what excites yeah, you about it. We're going to, I mean, no pressure starting week one, just a seven-week series. So, yeah. um, but uh, we're going to look at the seven churches of Revelation yeah. um, and, and what Jesus said about them, you know. They did some things great. Yeah. Um, it's not all bad that they yeah. did. They right. did some some things great. But then there were some things that they needed to fix. That's right. Um, and so we're gonna look at like what did they what did Jesus say to those churches? Yeah. Uh through the Apostle John. Yeah. Uh, Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation. I'm not not gonna give away too yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Uh but what did he say through the Apostle John to those churches? Like, yeah. what are they doing good? But what are some things that they could work on? Yeah. How can they get better? And we're going to look at each one of those churches. Yeah, uh, I can't list them off the top there's, of my head right there's now. There's incredible application, though. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't always read the Bible to just make it about you. Yeah. I think Scripture is timeless. So you can learn yeah. some things about the character and nature of God, but you can yeah. also learn some things about the human nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think there's there's some importance that when we read the Bible, we go like, what should I know? What should yeah. I learn about yeah. God? Or what should I apply to my life? Yeah. So you're talking about, you know, John having this vision, Christ's words to these churches, yeah. what does that look like for the modern yeah. church? What does that yeah, look like for like, Generations yeah. Church? What does that look like for Jeremy mm-hmm. and Aaron yeah. and Cooper? That's good. And, so I, I think it's going to be a powerful series. Yeah. I'm excited about where we're headed. When we said it in yeah. service on Sunday, <gasps> yeah, you, you heard hear, this you like hear the gas, gas right? yeah. of like, people are gonna, yeah, like, I was excited. like, I've yeah. never heard people yeah. gasp yeah. at like yeah, sermon series <laughs> yeah, that's next right. Sunday. Yeah. So like there's some excitement around it. We're excited about well, it. Well, and and we do an annual Easter survey every year. Mm-hmm. Um, we do it on Easter Sunday. It's the only time all year we collect the information that we collected within that survey. And one of the things that we always ask is like, what are some things you'd like to hear us <clears throat> preach, teach, mm-hmm. you know, some ministry opportunities? And Revelation this year and in times and things yeah. was one of the top responses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do think the day that we're living in. There's a lot of a lot of thought around like, are these the last days? Mm-hmm. Or how does this connect to kind of the timeline of history and mm-hmm. yeah. the the prophecies that, that scripture foretells about that haven't yet come to pass? Or mm-hmm. what what part of history are we living in? And you know, so I, I do think this is a good kind of first step into that. We may yeah. do another revelation series at mm-hmm. some point over the next you know, six or eight months as well, mm-hmm. um, kind of looking at some of the other pieces of Revelation. But I do think this is going to be a great series, and I'm excited. Can't wait. I'm excited about it. It seems like our people yeah. are. But listen, I'm, I'm so thankful that you've been a part of, of today's conversation. Thanks, Coop. And Coop. Pastor Aaron, uh, thank you guys for, for being a part of this. But again, thank you. If you're a part of our Generations Church family, 
Uh, we love you. We're excited for you to be a part of all the yeah. things we're talking about and be a part of this series and the summer events. Hopefully you're as excited as we are about the building. <laughs> um, but if you just found this through some other platform or some other connection, somebody shared it somewhere, um, and you're looking for a home church, we'd love to invite you to come be a part of Generations Church. Come check us out. Uh, we hope that this would be a place you could plug in and connect. And if not, and you're at a great distance, join us online or plug into a church where you're at. Uh, but I'm thankful you've been here for Between the Sundays. Yep. Uh, God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.